Well, welcome to Latin Boys and Girls. I know I can't be with you this week, but we're going to go ahead and review some of the things we've learned in the past week. I like to be in person when we're learning something new to be able to answer questions on the fly. So I thought I'd make today a review day and then also go over your homework from last week. I won't give any new homework this week or give any quizzes. We'll wait till we get back in the saddle for next week and we'll jump into all that. But for this week, let's go ahead and review everything we've learned with our first declension nouns and then we'll review some of the homework. So let's go ahead and practice our first declension noun endings. You guys ready? All right, so remember, first declension, noun endings. Oh wait, I forgot. Before we jump into first declension, let's talk about our noun cases, or noun jobs, as we also like to call them. So there's five different noun jobs, and they are as follows. Go ahead and say them with me if you know what they are. Ready? The first one is nominative. The second is genitive. The third is dative. The fourth is accusative. And last we have ablative. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative. So the nominative, what job noun does that do? If you said subject, you're absolutely right. Next we have genitive. Genitive is the possessive case or possessive job. So when we have a noun that has a, a possessive nature to it, like we say Mark's bicycle or something like that, right, it takes on a possessive tone, right? Genitive is possessive. So nominative is subject, genitive is possessive. Dative, what's dative? If you said indirect object, you are absolutely right. Dative is the indirect object. That means that accusative must be the, if you said direct object, you are right. Dative is the indirect object, accusative is the direct object. And then lastly, ablative is the object of the preposition. So we have nominative, which is the subject, genitive, which is possessive, dative, which is the indirect object, accusative, which is the direct object, and ablative, which is the object of the preposition. And these are the different nouns. And based on where the endings are in the chart we're about to do, tells you uh, what ending makes which noun do which job, all right? So here we go. Let's do first declension noun endings. Let's go ahead and do them together, all right? These are the A's, in case you're just wondering if you need a hint, all right? So let's start in order, starting with nominative, singular, working our way down all the way to ablative, and then we'll jump over to uh, nominative plural and work our way down as well. Here, here are the endings. Ready, on the count of three. One, two, three. Uh, a, a, am, a. Say them with me if you're not saying them. A, a rum, is, os, is. One more time. Uh, a, a, am, a. A, a rum, is, os, is. Very good. All right. Let's do. It now with the disappearing line game. Ready? We're going to make some of them go away and let's see if we still got it. Uh, a, a, um, a, a, a rum, is, os, is. All right, now we're going to take them all away. Let's see if we can get it. Ready? Uh, a, a, am, a, a, a rum, is, os, is. I hope you guys did well. All right, let's move on to second declension masculine. Ready? And we're going to set it up the same way. Let's do our second declension masculine endings, right? These are the ones with the us's, the i's, and the o's. Here we go. All right, starting with nominative singular, we'll begin. The ending starts as us, i, o, um, o, i, Orum is os is. Let's do it one more time. Us, I, O, um, O. I, Orum is os is. All right, let's do it with the disappearing line game now. Ready? Us, I, O, um, O. 
I, Oram, Is, Os, Is. All right, now let's take them all away. Here we go. You guys ready? <laughs> us, I, O, Um, O. I, Oram, Is, Os, Is. I hope you guys did well. Now let's move on to the trickier but similar second declension neuter noun chart. All right, so these are second declension neuter nouns, right? Instead of starting with us, it starts with um and the nominative singular case. Let's begin and let's start with the very first nominative singular position, starting with um, and then we'll work our way down. All right, let's say them together. Ready? This is nom or this is second declension neuter. Here we go. Um, I, O, um, O. A, Oram, is, A, is. Let's say it one more time. Um, I, O, um, O. A, Oram, is, A, is. All right, let's try the disappearing line game now. Let's do it together. Ready? All right. Um, I, O, um, O. A, Oram, is, A, is. Now let's take them all away. Ready? Um, I, O, um, O. A, Oram, is, A, is. All right, hope you guys did well at that. And remember, when we're telling apart the second declension neuter and the second declension masculine, there's a few differences, right? They're basically the same, except for in the second declension neuter, the nominative singular position is different. The nominative plural position is different. And the accusative plural position is different. So those are the only three positions of the endings change but everything else is identical or very similar to the nominative or the uh, first declension, I'm sorry, second declension masculine chart. All right. So the neuter chart for second declension only has those three differences from the masculine second declension chart. Well, guys, make sure to look over that and to look over your vocab as well. We have, um, since we've been in downs, we have over 30 new vocab, which are found on pages uh, 40, 42, and 44. Make sure you're studying all of the vocab for 40, 42, and 44, and any additional vocab we receive in the coming weeks. We have a test coming up in just a month, and all of that vocab that we're learning will be on that test. All right, well, let's go ahead and go over your homework. All right, boys and girls, let's go look over this homework. Uh, I'm on page 90. So we had 90 and 91, and I believe 97 and 98 for our homework. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and start with page 90 and 91. So on the top of page 90 in your student workbook, you'll see on one side of the chart, it says case name. On the other side, it says function. All it wants you to do is write in all of the case names for the nouns. So in order of nominative, genitive, uh, uh, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, ablative. Sorry, it took me a second. So you're going to write all those in order, and then you're going to write the job that they do right next to them, just like we reviewed in this lesson. In the next chart, in the middle chart on page 90, all it wants is you to write down all the cases, and then the singular endings and the plural endings for the second declension masculine chart. All right? And that can be found on page 42. The second declension masculine chart is on page 42. Those are the endings that the nominative singular starts with us. All right. So it's the us, I, the, those ones. All right. And then for the rest of page 90, all through 91, all it's wanting you to do is uh, take the, those nouns that it has in the first position. So in the singular nominative position of all of those charts on 90 and 91, it, it, starts, it starts out the first one for you. It gives you the, the nominative singular position of us. All it does is it wants you to take that, um, uh, that noun and fill in the rest of the ending. So for example, on page 90, you have amicus, right? Ami, uh, is the, that stem coming from the Latin word meaning friendship or friendliness, right? Ami. 
So you amik, right? So you have amikas, right? And then it would want, want you to say amichi, amikas, amichi, all right? And then just go down the chart and fill in all the different endings, right? So you want to do that for every single noun. So agnes, right? Then after agnes would be agni, right? Or agni, right? And you would just go down uh, the chart and fill in the different endings with the nouns from nominative, geni genitive, uh, dative, accusative, ablative. All right. Does that make sense? So you're just filling in that chart and filling in the endings for every noun, um, but you're just using the nouns that go with them. And then when you get to 91, all it's asking you to do, all right, uh, at the bottom of page 91, again, these are all second declension masculine. It just wants you to parse out the noun. So you want to write what declension it is, which is easy because it tells you that the whole chart is going to be second declension. It asks what the gender is, which is also easy because they told you at the top of the chart they're all going to be masculine. Then it's going to ask for the number. That's whether it's singular or plural. Then it's going to ask for the case, which is also easy because they've went ahead and filled it in for you. It's, they're all in the nominative case. And then lastly, they want you to translate that Latin word with that particular noun ending into English. All right. And, and you can explain what, uh, what it says. All right, so that's what you're doing for 91. Let's go ahead and move to uh, 97 and 98. So 97 is um, very similar. It's very similar to what we did in 90 and 91. However, for 97 and 98, you, can no you notice the difference is instead of it being second declension masculine, they want you to do the same thing now with the second declension neuter endings. So you have all these different nouns, uh, forum, saxum, templum, opium, regnum, verbum. And so they have them in the nominative singular position. They already started you off with the stem and the noun ending. And they just want you to take that noun, that, uh, that stem, write it in all the boxes, and then put the different endings that correspond to it, right? And it goes in order from singular. It goes sing singular, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, ablative. And it does the same thing with plural. So again, you're just... Um, writing in all the endings, combining them with those noun stems, all right? Writing in all the endings, combining them with the noun stems, but instead of second declension masculine, which is the us, I, you're doing it in the second declension neuter, which starts with the um, I, okay? And again, if you need help telling the differences between those two, second declension masculine is on page 42, second declension neuter is on page 44, all right? And then at the bottom of page uh, 97, it's asking you to do the same thing that you did on page 91 with that chart. It's giving you uh, the noun, and then it wants you to parse it out, right? So the, the D stands for declension, and it kind of gives you a little key up at the top in the gray. If you see, there's like a little gray kind of like uh, oval-shaped uh, um, thing right above the chart in, in, uh, on page 97, and it gives you a key. It says D equals declension. G equals gender, uh, number equals whether it's singular or plural, C equals case, uh, TR equals translation. So again, it's, they're just abbreviations for what we saw on the previous page. You want to go ahead and fill those in. And that's easy because they already did the case for all of you on all those, and they're all nominative. All right. And then um, it's just more of filling in the same on page 98. And again, it should be very easy because they made the case all nominative for you again. So, uh, again, so those are the instructions for 97, 98. If you need any specific help, right, please feel free to call me or FaceTime me if you're stuck on a particular question. I'm here for you guys. I'm happy to help. Well, guys, I hope that um, was helpful. And I know that that's not um, a full Latin lesson, but it should give you enough to think over and review. You can play this video over again, practice the disappearing line game with our other declensions and make sure you get that for homework finished for next week. God bless you guys, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see you uh, hopefully next week, next Tuesday for Latin. Take it easy.